Hi all. Those of you that watch my videos on a regular basis know that I am always trying to be positive and upbeat um, about uh, about the team and about the performances. I try to find the positives in, in everything. Um, but I do like to think that I am honest. Um, although the honesty is basically from my perspective, right? So um, it may not be your perspective, but I was excited um, to be going back to, to White Hart Lane yesterday um, because I haven't been for a, a, a few weeks. Um, and I was really optimistic that this was going to be the turning point um, that we were, you know, we'd had a break, we'd had a chance to, to recoup, Poch has had a time to have a bit of a think um, and, and basically make a plan for us to uh, going forward. Um, but hand on my heart, I have to say, I was really disappointed yesterday, really disappointed. Um, I just didn't see any reaction at all um, in the game. I felt that um, our build-up play was very slow. Our reactions were very slow. There was no press. There was no passion. It kind of just felt like we were resigned to the fact that we're going through a bad patch and it's somebody else's responsibility to to turn that around. Um, I saw um, the team selection and I know a lot of people are going... Five at the back, what's that all about and all the rest of it. And I tried to make sense out of it by thinking, well, you know, is he trying to get the fullbacks bombing on? Um, getting up the line, putting crosses in and so on. And and so the, the, the three centre-backs would be, you know, just covering the whole thing and the, and, the, and the fullbacks would be, you know, up the flank sort of thing. Sadly, however, that didn't seem to happen. Um... For me, I just and I, I don't like to single out individual players because it is a team of collectives. But I don't think we can ignore the fact that there is a real downturn in the performance of Danny Rose. Now I love Danny Rose. I, I love his passion. I love his aggression. I love his commitment. Um, and even when he was saying things about, you know, having to Google players and stuff like that, I actually thought, you know, you've got a point, it's fair play to you. But equally, I don't think he can go without criticism, um, purely because watching him yesterday, I just felt like he was trying to buy a foul every two minutes. It almost felt like he didn't have the confidence to take anybody on anymore, to actually bomb past people, to to outrun them um, and whip those balls in that that we so desperately need, um, and it was almost like he was he was running towards the player, waiting for them to tackle so that he could get a get a foul. And on a couple of occasions, literally the referee just went get up, you know, and and he looked frustrated at that. Um, but that's how it looked to me, and I also felt that for the goal, he was too he was too deep inside. So when the ball was played, it was just straight over his head. Great touch by the by the Watford player, who who took it in his stride and just whipped in a lovely ball. And the three centre backs basically didn't clear it, and it was a a, a great goal. Um, so. You know, we're not wanting to make a scapegoat out of Danny Rose. I, I did feel that he he contributed very little yesterday. And I find that really sad to say, I, you know. And I don't know why that is. I, I don't know whether it's a confidence thing or or what. I, I'm, I'm sure as a professional, he's not just not bothering. I, you know, I don't buy that. I don't buy that players are just not interested anymore and they don't want to play. Don't buy that. Um, I get that players are coming in and out of form and confidence is a big issue with that. But 
we really do need to look at that and, and maybe maybe we just have to bite the bullet and say Ben Davis you're gonna have to come in until his long term replacement that being Danny Rose's long term replacement is actually embedded into the team and, and, and can move on. Now whether that's Cessignon or Cessignon playing in front of Davis, I you know, I don't know. Um but I really do feel that when when so many players are out of form, you cannot afford to let the player play through the bad period. Um, you can do that when it's just an odd one, but you can't do that when there's so many of them. So even Toby and Jan yesterday felt very awkward, felt very slow um, and sloppy at times. I, I felt that there was a, a, a couple of occasions where Jan had, had, had played a square pass and you're kind of almost sitting there going, oh no, you know, what's going to happen? Um, so, you know, again, you know, these guys are the, are, have been and are the rock of, of uh, Belgium's defence. So I, I, I don't see why they've kind of lost this form so rapidly. That, you know, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, you know. And with, with um, Rose playing out of form, these two guys playing out of form, and then you look across and you've got, you know, you've got um, Aurier, who has come under an awful lot of flack. Um, and to be quite honest with you, quite rightly so. I, again, I, like I say, I don't like pointing out individual players, but this isn't about individual players. This is pretty much a, a, a collective. Um, Aurier, again, didn't really provide anything for me yesterday. And there was, again, a couple of occasions where he dived in and you think to yourself, don't. Don't do that. Don't dive in there. What are you doing? Because he always has that ability to get a card. And you only need two of them. And then you're in the showers again. And it's like... I d it's a worry. It really is a worry. The defence, which was, you know, not so long ago, you know, rock solid, has now become very, very leaky. Um, with lots of mistakes in them. Um... So, uh, for me, I, I just felt that there was such a lack of drive in the team, you know. Things did improve. Uh, of course, you know, when Ondembele came on, things improved. Lamella, for all the haters of Lamella, I have to say, this season, that his passion and his drive have become consistent. His performances have become more consistent. Um, we all know he sometimes he starts off looks great in preseason, comes in a couple of games, then goes down like that. This season, I think he's been a lot more consistent th than he has been in the past, um, and I think that's credit to him. Um, I, f I felt that he he added something to the team, along with Sonny, who's had a long trip back from from South Korea, um, and so you know those three players when they come on really did make a difference. Delhi in patches looked better. Uh, I felt that he was adding more to it. But again, Harry Kane, you know, great captain, great player, one of the best in the world. But yesterday he seemed so out of sorts, dropping so deep because he wasn't getting anything from the midfield because there was, obviously was a lack of creativity with, with Ericsson being out. But then let's be honest, you know, most people were calling for Ericsson to be out because he's been so out of form. Um, so it is a real difficult balance to, to get this team playing in the way that we would expect them to. And as fans, because we've because we've seen our team improve and, and, and start to get somewhere, or we feel that we're starting to get somewhere, our expectations are so high that we should beat every team. But no one's going to make that easy. No one is going to make it easy for us. They are all going to try to piss us off and make it as difficult as possible. For me, the one thing I would say about Watford yesterday is although they were really well drilled defensively and they did defend for their lives, um, they did press and they did push us. Um, and for want of some, some better finishers, I feel they could have had the game... Two or three nil. To be honest, that's how that's how I was seeing it. You know, they kept breaking away, they kept pressing us and making us make mistakes, and, and putting us under pressure. Um, and like I say, if they'd have had some better finishes on the on the pitch, 
the scoreline could have been a lot worse than it was. I feel, I honestly do feel that a draw flatters us. Um, we basically grabbed that in the last 10 minutes of the game when those three players that I've just mentioned came onto the pitch. That seemed to make all the difference for us. Um, and maybe, maybe, as Poch is saying, you know, things are changing and that's what we needed. Maybe we did need a, a scrappy 1-1 draw um, against a bottom team to start to rebuild that confidence. I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, you would think that that's sort of wishful thinking. Um, but maybe maybe that is the turning point. Maybe that is going to help us um, instill a little bit more faith in the, in the team and in themselves. Up next week is, is Liverpool. Wow, I mean, you can't ask for a harder game, can you, really, at this moment in time? Um, so after, the, after the, the easy bit that we were supposed to have, we've now got a couple of really difficult games coming up. So it's going to be a roller coaster, absolutely roller coaster. But what else are we going to do? You know, like I've said many, many times, we are Tottenham supporters. We've been here before. Um, we can moan, we can bitch, but ultimately we'll be back there for the next game, um, supporting the team and, and hopefully uh, seeing things turn around very, very soon. But as I say, yesterday was a huge disappointment. Um, sad to see it. Um, at half time, there was a lot of booing. Um, and I get it, I understand it, me personally I don't agree with it, I don't think you should boo your own team, but I, how else are you going to let the team know that there that there's a problem, you know, how else are you going to let them know that you're unhappy, so yeah, I mean I was sat in a Paxton and there was some distinct booing coming from that end, so a lot of work to do, a lot of pain to go through I think, but ultimately we keep going. Out the Spurs.